Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm making an eyeball shirt. I washed and dried my shirt, soaked it in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung it out of my panda spin dryer and so it's just barely damp. I also have it turned inside out. I'm only going to put the eye on the front of my shirt so I need to isolate the front of my shirt. To do that, I folded my shirt in half and using a washable marker I'm making a mark at the middle of the bottom of the front of my shirt and the back of my shirt. I'm also making marks at the middle of the top of my shirt on the front and on the back. Then to isolate the front I'm going to grab the two marks that I made on the front of the shirt, lift my shirt up off of the table and shake it just a little bit. When I lay it back down I'm going to smooth out my wrinkles. To draw my design on my shirt I'm going to find something that I like the size of for the pupil of the eye and so I'm just grabbing my masking tape and I'm going to use that center ring. I'm going to draw half of that circle onto my shirt. Then using a washable marker and a piece of string, I'm going to draw another half circle on for the iris area. Then I'm just going to freehand the rest of an eye onto my shirt. I'm going to start with the center circle or the pupil and I'm going to go ahead and fan fold that and tie it with some sinew. I'm going to fan fold the next area or what is known as the iris area of the eye and tie it up with some sinew too. Finally, I'm going to fan fold the last portion of my eye and tie it with sinew as well.
I'm going to put one more very thin line of sinew around the outside of my eye just to help with any kind of dye leaking. I don't want the background color to leak into the white portion of my eye. Now I'm going to take the two marks that I made on the back of the shirt, grab those and isolate the back of my shirt. I'm going to put one small offset line going up the middle of the back of my shirt. I'm going to do some pretty large fan folds. They're about the width of the hem of this shirt, going straight up the back of the shirt. Once I have it folded, I'm going to tie it with some kite string. I'm going to put one sleeve inside of the other and line up the seams really well. This will help my shirt lay down a little bit flatter. I'm going to try to get it as flat as possible and then I'm going to scrunch the rest of it and hold it in place with some rubber bands. For this shirt, I'm going to use some thickened dye for the pupil portion. And I have to tell you straight off the bat, I over thickened my dye. I put too much of the sodium alginate down in there when I was mixing it up. And so I probably should have gone ahead and thinned it out a little bit. I didn't, I went ahead and used it this thick, but I wouldn't suggest that. So for the black area, 
I'm going to use black TDB from Custom Colors. I'm using a paper towel to dab away any of the excess dye that's sitting on top and to try to make sure I force enough dye down through the shirt on this end portion because like I said my dye is really thick it's just wanting to sit on top of the fabric now that I have this black area all the way dyed I'm going to work on the iris portion. I'm going to use turquoise from Grateful Dyes and lapis from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm putting the turquoise right down the middle and I'm putting a stripe of lapis on either side of the turquoise. I want to make sure I get it well saturated, but I don't want to oversaturate if possible. I'm going to try to put another thin line of the black on the outside in between these two sinew lines and use a black spoon to kind of press that into the fabric. But here again, because it was so thick, it didn't work out so well. The fan fold at the back, I'm going to do an offset with. For the fan folds on the back of my shirt, I've taken my dye and put it down inside of small needle tip bottles. That way I have a little bit more control over where my dye goes. I'm starting at the end with a line of stock red from Grateful Dyes. Then I'm going to skip a space and make another line of the stock red. Then I'm going to add fuchsia from Grateful Dyes in between the two of them. On the scrunch portion of the shirt, I'm going to use Wholesale Pink from Custom Colors. I'm trying to watch when I put my Wholesale Pink down close to my eyeball that I don't get any onto the eye area. Now I'm going to turn my shirt over and then on the fan fold portion I'm going to do the opposite of what I did on the front side. I'm going to put the fuchsia, then the red, then another line of fuchsia. So I'm basically going to offset that area. Then I'm going to dye the rest with wholesale pink.
After I'm finished applying the dye, I have a tub that has a rack down in the bottom of it so that any excess dye can just drain through. I'm going to put the shirt on top of that rack, put the lid on the tub, and put it outside for a few hours. Then I'm going to bring it in, let it continue to process for another 24 hours, and rinse it out. And this is what our shirt looks like. You can definitely tell that it's an eye, but I think next time I'm probably not going to use quite as much of the blue dye because I, it bled a little too much over into the white area for me then I definitely won't thicken the black as much as I did for this one. I was a little too concerned that it would bleed, so I over thickened the dye. So I went too much the opposite direction. It also would have looked a lot better around the outside of the white if the black line would have been a solid one. But I couldn't quite get all of that black dye since it was so thick to go down through the fabric. I like the way the fan fold and offset in the back turned out too. It's just a little added design to the shirt. Hey, if you guys are enjoying watching my videos, I sure would appreciate it if you'd hit the big red subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.